People say to me all the time, you are such a good looking man. You're so humble, Matt. Today, we're meeting the Frasers to hear all about their new show. AGT champs Luke Islam and O's Perlman are getting us pumped for the new All-Star season. I actually worked on Wall Street and yes, left the steady paycheck to do this. And Black Ink Crew's Don and Miss Kitty break down all the drama in the Windy City. You know, you know. Y'all are mad. Y'all are mad. This is your reality check. It's time to celebrate. Welcome to the show. I'm Darren Karp, and boy, have I got a surprise for you. I would like you all to meet the Frasers. Matt Frazier and Alexa Papa Jonas are here. How are you two? Hi, we're so great. We're great. Best color here. combo. Oh, thank you. Ever. Thank I love you. it. It's amazing. I'm so happy to have you guys. And as an initiation of the show, we got to break down our top five. Are you ready? Oh, we're Let's so ready. Let's do it. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. All right. <laughs> At number five. As wildfires rage on in Australia, the Irwin family and their medical team at the Australia Zoo are doing everything in their power to help animals in need. In an interview earlier this week with the Australian news show Sunrise, Terry and Robert Irwin spoke about the devastation. Quote, we're seeing all different kinds of injuries. Obviously, smoke inhalation and burns are happening frequently. Robert said during the conversation, visibly teary-eyed, of course. He went on, we're just trying to do our best to help in any way we can. It's a pretty tough situation. We're absolutely heartbroken. I mean what's to say about this? This is absolutely horrible, let alone the animals, the koalas, the kangaroos, the people, the devastation. That got me, I think, like the most, though, like seeing the koalas needing water and oh, that honestly, it shatters my heart. It's We're so sad. Animal people. It's so sad, but you know, what about the Irwin stepping forward and helping out? I know, and they are, they are the Australians family. of Australia. So yes. I'm yes. glad, they're, I feel yes. like people rally behind them. Yeah, they do, and it, you know, it increases the morale. I it mean, does. when you hear the Irwins are out there doing something, like, right. like I know that made me feel good. Yeah, they're such a beautiful Family. No, they really so. are. And the bushfires in Australia are causing unprecedented devastation to the wildlife of the country. For more information or where you can donate, you can visit the websites of organizations like the World Wildlife Fund and the Port Macquarie Koala Hospital. Please donate, guys. At number four. Dog is not in a new relationship, okay? On Tuesday, Dwayne Dog Chapman shared an Instagram selfie of himself and Moon Angel, a longtime friend of the famous family. Fans flooded the post with supportive comments, assuming the two were a couple. However, a source close to Dog tells people they're not dating. Quote, Moon has been a family friend to Beth and Dog for years. The source continued, since Beth's death, she has stepped in to help Dog in his time of need. There will never be another Beth. It's been about seven months since the bounty hunter's beloved wife, Beth Chapman, passed away from cancer complications. Doesn't always seem like whenever you have like a a straight man and a straight woman in a picture, though they just assume you guys are a couple. Oh yeah, you can't yeah. you can't hang out with like another woman or another guy. It's like impossible. Especially when you're on TV, right? Exactly. People yeah. are just gonna assume and flood That's your it. comments. You couldn't have said it better, though. There is definitely no other Beth. Like yeah. right. we we were talking about this, especially when she passed, unfortunately, and. We're like, we, our heart goes out to him because we don't know what we would do without each other. True. Never mind how much he loved her and how much they loved each other. Yes. And so you could feel sweet. it. You Ugh. could feel it through the screen when you watched them yeah. the love that they had. Yeah, they were a good couple. They were. I gotta tell you, you know, I just want, heart. like, reading the stories and seeing the pictures, like, yeah. I really just wanna read him. Like, I oh. really wish, like, I had the opportunity to read him. You well, so should. I should reach out. Oh, we're gonna make it happen. Okay. At number three. <laughs> Ryan Seacrest is starting out 2020 with a bang. Literally the best video of the week. The talk show host took a spill during Tuesday's episode of Live with Kelly and Ryan. He fell backward on his chair and landed on the floor. The unexpected moment happened when he attempted to catch a gold balloon, posting the moment to his Instagram with the caption, first fumble of the new season, hope I make the playoffs. Luckily, the reality star was fine and ended up catching the balloon after all. Oh, I just, my his God. His fumble was too big. <laughs> no, but he fell far. He that fell was deep. He, that he was hit his deep. hip. Oh Has my anything God. like embarrassing Is... happened to the two of you on TV? And if so, give me the gossip. Oh my God, uh, yes, yes. Because the things- <laughs> Maybe you. Yeah. Well, I, 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 oh, she puts me on the spot. Throws me under the bus. I didn't know that everything that you did in reality TV made it like on uh, segment. Like, so I just yeah. like, they said, go about your normal day. So there I am using the bidet. There I am putting on the man Spanx, okay? All of his prized possessions. There I am uh -huh. washing my cats naked. We're calling those manks. 
Manx. 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 I just yeah. play that in my head. Done. Oh, so, my trademark. I mean, oh, yeah, trademark. trademark. Luckily, I don't get embarrassed. But still, like, who would think that that makes good TV? I don't think that makes good TV. Do you think that makes good TV? I, I kind of do. You, do I, I should ask you. I kind of do. I think I mean, it's, like, unbelievable. I never thought that, that would make do. it in. I never thought that would make it anything in. Anything for you? Have you done anything embarrassing that you're like, oh, my, oh my God. God, I hope it doesn't make it air? Knock on wood, not yet. But let me tell you, I am clumsy, so thank God we're on, like, a We're nice on soft couch, surfaces. And I have something here. Amen, guys. Uh, All right, at number two. Cardi B is expressing her concern about the growing tension between the United States and Iran. On Friday, just after that guy in office ordered an airstrike that killed Iran's top military official, the rapper tweeted that the president is putting Americans' lives in danger. The former reality star went on to say that this is the dumbest move he's made to date and that she would be applying for a Nigerian citizenship. I don't necessarily recommend that, but would you guys move to another country? Well, here's the thing. I mean, I don't even know how she's keeping up with all the news. I know. I barely know what goes on in my I own house. I don't even yeah. know. Good. God bless Cardi B. You know yeah, what? she's speaking God up. Listen. Listen. She's speaking up. Listen, she's on the platform where people might listen. And you know what I mean? Like, hey, good for her. It's 2020. Everybody move. has an opinion. Yeah. If you had to move to another country, where are you going? Oh, my God. Where would we go? Probably Italy. Oh. Well, I can't no, say no. We're Italian. I, I can't I, speak I, Italian. I need to go to an English-speaking well, country. Yeah, you but you, got, you, got, you can do it. You can be fine. Just, you know, meatballs. You're yeah. good. You're good. That's it. Meatballs done. in Italy. See, we are <laughs> making, we're already making mistakes. I want more I'm moving to New Zealand. They got more yeah. sheep oh. than people. Yes. They got more sheep than people. These like are my that. people. These oh. are my sheeple. And at, sheeple. Num <laughs> sheeple. and at number one, Ariana Maddox is queering up the record about her sexuality. The Vanderpump Rules star seemingly shot back at the co-star Jax Taylor on Twitter Tuesday after he implied that she is a lesbian during an episode of Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen. The drama all started when Jax answered a caller's question by mumbling under his breath that Ariana likes women. When she caught wind of his comments, she tweeted out that she does like women and men and clarified that she is, in fact, bisexual. I mean, listen, I am That's a lesbian, so I, I, I appreciate her coming out and being like not embarrassed by it she's like yeah i do yeah. like women and men but what do you think about jack's kind of calling her out i can't believe that 2020 let like people that. be who they want to be yeah. right it's also not that interesting but it's you know what it's like not it love is. is love love is love who cares if you love a man a woman if you love both you fall in love with a person i'm proud of her you know? and that's the best clap back like oh you're a lesbian well i am actually i like men i like yeah. women i'm bisexual like, good she good owned her. It. you I don't even know her, and I am so proud of her. I <laughs> agree. Go. Ariana, call me. Yes. Uh, we got to oh, take, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> wow. take a quick break, but we're going to chat with these two all about their new show when we come back. Stay tuned. People say to me all the time, you are such a good looking man. I don't care if they call me a scam artist, but if they call me foul, I'm gonna cry. Maybe we could get Matt and you together. <laughs> There's another pageant queen in the house that I'm trying to compete with. What? I'm praying that my parents don't <laughs> this up. What is going on? <laughs> Relationship goals, welcome back to the show. I'm still here with Matt Frazier and his adorable wife, Alexa, whose new show, Meet the Frasers, will be premiering on E! very soon. Well, wait a minute, not my wife yet. First of all, I was just gonna say, do you know something I don't know? Uh, uh, because I'm waiting for that ring, honey. Wow. So, I, what? Uh, did I, did I just I gonna, a bus? I think we did me? that purposely to get you in trouble. <laughs> I like to stir the pot a little bit. Like, uh, obviously. Stir, she's got a nice ring on, though. I mean, what I feel like that counts. Well, yeah, this is my promise ring, and I love it, but... You know, you get sick of seeing the same thing for yeah. a little while. Oh, a new Matt, one going uh -huh. on. uh -huh. What a way to start an interview. What yeah. a way to start What a way to start. Throw some oh. hints. Since when did this become roasted Matt, what's me? your timeline? Is it going to happen in six months or a couple weeks? You know, I think you're going to have to watch and see because, you know, uh -huh, the problem uh -huh. is, the problem is, you know, let's just put it all out there. Yeah. She has these, you know, ideas of the proposal and whatnot. She wants to get in. Uh, she wants me to get pr proposed to in Disneyland or World. whatnot. Yes, Disney she's, world. she's a world You gal. can't tell a guy where to propose. You can't do that. That's like He's been saying that. That's relationship code 101. No, you can't do that. I think, you no, I you think it's that. like, you, you know. You both are very type A and controlling, and I like <laughs> yes. this, because yes. I could see you proposing, and she's like, mm -mm, not good enough, redo that. Do it again. Yeah, I can see this happening. <laughs> see, now, so. why you set me up to fail? See, this is what I'm saying. I'm just no. saying. That makes me want to propose. This is fantastic right now. See, oh. I set you up. This is... This is what happened. Well, why, and I feel like I already know the answer to this, did you guys decide to do a reality show? I mean, how could we not do a reality show? Yeah. We're, I mean, we're you guys are perfect reality right here. <laughs> Perfectly <laughs> fun. Well, listen, you have a psychic medium. Right. You have a pageant queen. That's already weird enough. You're in two different categories. Yeah. Then you have our insane family, two skeptics that are in your family. 
Mm. Um, my mom, Pulls a baby out. nurse that has no filter whatsoever. It, it's just insane. It's How ripe. do you not watch it? It's ripe for TV. You guys yeah. are hilarious. What was that discussion like between the two of you and your family? Did you have any hesitations about doing it? I mean, you're, you have to open up your whole life. You know, right. there are some negatives to it, and you got to be vulnerable on camera. So any hesitations? So I think that my dad was hesitant at first, yeah, definitely. I think so. Because, you know, he's 21 years in the military, you know, right. kind of like the straight man, whatever. Yeah. Like, you know, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't like too much of, you know, his personal life talked about or exposed sure. or whatnot. Conservative, a little bit more conservative. Right. Exactly, exactly. Exactly. But I'll tell you, our family was like, you know what, we're in. I we're love in. that. Yeah. Well, we were a little nervous about that because, <laughs> well, I'm, you know, into pageants, so I know how to speak, and you know how to speak, and we kind of know, you know, when to do what we need to do. But they don't. They're unfiltered. <laughs> yes, they don't. Un unfiltered. So, <laughs> they so they're even like crazier than we're you guys. Like, oh, you guys are totally nails. crazy. Oh, we're subdued. We're subdued. You should see our, oh my God. Listen, let me tell you. I, I want that know. Thanksgiving dinner invite. I just need to, like, witness what <laughs> happens between... <laughs> Everyone going on here. Okay, when we were talking about stuffing the turkey, her mother thought it was a different thing. Mm -hmm. She thought we were getting ready to make a baby. Uh, I, yeah. I, I am without speech right now. Okay, yeah. on that's Thanksgiving, we, okay, I'm without you, speech. And that's a lot of the show, you will be without speech because you just, it, I feel like so many things that come out, first of all, your mouth, but our moms, <laughs> like, I love it's like jaw-dropping. <laughs> I love this. You're going to have to propose Did to her ASAP. This? Did you plan oh, this? We, Thank you. We kiki before me and Alexa. Now, Alexa, you come from the pageant world as a yeah. former Miss Teen Rhode Island, which is incredible. Thank what you. has the transition been like from that world to reality? It's definitely tough. It's definitely tough. I mean, obviously, with pageantry, you have to be... Look at you killing it. Get, oh, thank you. Hey, hey, hey. Do you still you. have the sash? My, oh, of course I do. Course. They're all I'm... lined up in my closet. That was my glory day. That's awesome. But, um, no, I mean, I loved it. You definitely have to be, you know, a little bit more polished. You're told to talk about different things, whereas reality, like you right now, I'm much more relaxed. I'm able to kind of just have a conversation with you. And, you know, it, it's just great. I, I, love, I love both. I love both. It's hard to compare them. Well, also, you're not judged all the time. Well! <laughs> <laughs> what? You guys are what? newbies in the reality world, yeah. sweetie. Oh, it, it, it's I'm judgy. Sorry, it's, it's probably oh, it's more judgy, judgy than maybe. the pageant. I don't know. But, well, Matt, you know, what I'm is prepared. it like being with a beauty queen? I can tell you, it's like dating a Victoria's Secret model every single day. That's not a I mean, bad thing. It though. is. I, mean, I feel like, I mean, look at her. She looks like a supermodel. I mean, oh, I love, I, I mean, I love it. I love that you're so into fashion. I love seeing, you know, the different outfits that you wear. I love the fact that she always has something to wear. Of course. Oh, well, I mean, she's she's killing always. it right now. I mean, look at this. Look well, at you guys. What do you want to say about me? What about me? You, you, you well, I was always say, coming out of her. You don't well, come I mean, me. I like, I, I mean, this is this is Italian gold right here. I, that, I, I was going to say, I mean, look at your shoes. Oh, come you, on, you're killing it. Now, Alexa, what's it like dating a psychic? Do you feel like you can get away with stuff? Or is he like... It's it's different. I, okay. I'll totally say that it's different. 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 Um, he did, did he read you on your first date? I was just gonna say that you maybe you're a psychic too. Uh -huh. He did, and I have anxiety, so like I went shaking and I almost like passed out at the at the coffee shop that we were at. But um, and I definitely had a lot of like stupid questions for you too. I feel like. Did you but... ask him to read you, or did he just do it? I think I did. I think I was like, oh, who do you see behind me? And he was like, oh, your grandmother. And I was like. <laughs> Whoa. That's gotta what? be crazy though, right? She... Because as a psychic, wouldn't you feel like if the grandmother's behind her that she's like judging you what out oh my you God. Her? He was so on point, like so on point. Wow. And from that day, I really have learned to appreciate it. And mm. I think it helps us in a lot of situations. And come on, like every girl in the world wants their boyfriend to know what's happening in their head. Absolutely. Without well, them why, why having to say her, anything. Why don't you tell her about how you ran out of the coffee shop? Oh, well, first game you ran out attack. of the <laughs> I didn't think she was yeah. gonna run back in. After I told her about her grandma, she ran out of the coffee like, shop. She says, I think I'm gonna me. pass out. I said, well, if you pass out, I can revive you. I was an EMT. If oh. you die, we'll talk to you. You're a jack of all trades. I am. I'm very impressed. Yeah. Now, Matt, I wanna switch gears because it looks like you and your mom have a pretty close relationship from what I see. So close in fact that she decided to move down the street from you. Let's take a look at that. Mom's moving back. Yeah, all right. No. No way she's moving back. Yes, she is. She's moving back right down the street from you guys. I am scared. Like, dead people don't scare me. My mother moving back to Rhode Island, that scares me. Like, the more as I try to get away, the more she tries to suck on. Has she lost her mind? <laughs> all right, Matt. How is it living seven minutes away from your mama? Oh, I gotta tell you, it's very hard. It's very, very hard. It's like having surveillance cameras on you 24-7. With I mean, comments. 
Yes. Kind, yes. If imagine you're if, you're, so imagine if, if, you're, if your Amazon Alexa could talk back to you. That's what it's like. So she and is like, Twitter. Talk. She is social media, just yeah. hounding you all the time. Oh, yeah. we call her the news reporter. She's the Frasier news reporter. <laughs> I love that. Alexa, what's it like having a psychic helicopter mother? You know, how do you deal with the smothering? <laughs> okay. It's a lot at yeah. times. But listen, I mean, my family is the same. We're coming from two big True. Italian families. My mom is not any different, so right. I feel like I was already accustomed to it. And you know what? The thing about Angela, I really have to say, is that she does it all out of love. Of and course. she's very protective. And I know that she does, you know, love me, hopefully. <laughs> and she obviously loves Matt very much. Um, it's a lot, but I'm... I Be want careful. you. She's watching right now. I know, I know she, I'm being right careful now. too. I'm Listen. like, I love you, mom. I want you. I want to, to marry you. You know, I want to be with you. <clears> and <throat> that she means. Wants to marry you. Yeah, oh, yeah. right? <clears throat> yeah, and yeah, that yeah. means marrying into family too. So, you know what? I love Angela. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how this goes. You're going to have to watch the season to see how, how this goes. I hope yeah. they edit none of what's happening here because this is just so good. <laughs> it's and, not edited. Yeah, no, no. Oh, we're going to no, we're going to send this right to your mom, the rough cut. <laughs> and that you have a new book out, right? Yes. Uh, tell me about it. So it's called When Heaven Calls, Life Lessons from America's Top Psychic Medium. Look at this. That's me. Yes, I wanted to match the book today. I was so going to say. I was waiting perfect. for you to notice. Yes. One in every perfect. color. One in every color. Okay, I you know what? It's a good thing. Oh, I yeah. love it. All right, back to the book. <laughs> she supports you. <laughs> right. So I think that people are really going to enjoy this book because it, it's really a timeline of my, of my life. It's about growing up psychic and the challenges that I went through, you know, seeing and hearing dead people. Because when I was younger, I didn't realize that it was a gift. I really was afraid of it. And I ran away from it for so, so, so long. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when I learned that it was an actual ability that I could use to help and, you know, help people reconnect with their loved ones on the other side, next thing you know, it became a calling and a mission of mine to help as many people as I possibly could. So it really goes through my journey as an EMT and then transitioning into mediumship to next thing you know, one day getting a call and, uh, you know, getting a call from E! Entertainment and transitioning into a reality TV show. You're very nurturing. It's like you've helped everyone throughout your whole career from being an EMT to this. It's, it's really nice to see. I'm, I'm proud of you. That's awesome. Oh, thank you. What can we expect from this season? Tell people why they need to tune in to the ridiculousness <laughs> that is your two sides of the family. I mean, I can see it, but why should they watch it? Because you will not believe what you are about to see. <laughs> you really won't. You really won't. I mean, like we said, there's Spanx. It, right. like, Psychic Major Spanx. readings. Psychic readings. There's pageantry. Italian there's, mamas. There's meatballs. There's, I mean, look at this. There's everything, everything. There's, there's Bengal cats running around. There's I love this. Conflict. Ooh, cats. There's, you know, love. It, it's just everything. It's everything that you could ask for in a show. I mean, we have our main, you know, characters, like our family, and there's, we're so different. You know, every single one of us is so different that there's something for everybody. Yeah, and I think the skeptics can, can tune in, fashionistas yeah. can tune in, oh, people yeah. missing loved ones can tune in, people who just want to feel a part of a family can tune in, and you can yeah. join Monday nights with something, us. Something for everyone. You guys are yes. absolutely infectious, and I'm sure the audience <laughs> will feel that way, too. Oh. Matt, Alexa, thank you so much for joining us today, and I can't wait to see the show. Meet the Frasers premieres Monday, January 13th at 10 p.m. We have to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're taking you from Rhode Island to Chicago with the Black Ink Crew. Don't go anywhere. If we hit the next club, yo ass cook. <laughs> Let's hit the next club then. What does it matter if you Ryan. Because I did it. Oh Ryan. my god. Oh. I did it. Yes, Hold you up. did. What are you doing right now? What they won't care. Why is this you? Welcome back to the show. I've got Miss Kitty and Don from Black Ink Crew New York and Chicago on the line. How are the oh, two yes. of you doing? Great. I'm great. I'm. <laughs> I'm excellent. That, that <laughs> clip was heated. That clip was heated. Now, Kitty, we need to get to the bottom of this. What happened at Essence Fest? Because as we saw it in that clip, Tati claimed she saw something. So how did you feel when you found out it was Tati spreading those rumors? Hurt. That's the first word that came to mind because Tati was one of the closest people to me in my life. You know, she had been there for me with my mom's passing and everything. And... Just for her to just come out like that, I'm like, girl, what did you see? What did, what did you claim to have seen? Come on now, don't do that. We're not gonna do that. 
Do, do you think she was just stirring up drama to stir it up? And Don, do you think anything was going on with Kitty and Ryan? Um, yeah, stirring stuff up to stir it up. You know, like, everybody want to keep their position, right? And that's what she did to keep hers. Uh, you know, from my perspective, you know, uh, Ryan's never gave off any impression um, other than friendship with her. So, you know what I mean? Uh, so he never put nothing out there for us to feel like they was, you know, messing around other than just being two good friends and kicking it. That's about, that's pretty much the impression he always gave us. You know what I mean? Even if there was a situation, he a gentleman, man. So he ain't kissing and telling anyway. Even after that little sort of date they went on, you still think like nothing was going on? Hey, I'm just trying to get to the bottom of it. I'm trying to keep my job too, all right, Miss Kitty? Don't blame me. I mean, I mean, listen, man, it's good energy there. I think they, you know, look good kicking it. You got two uh, beautiful individuals hanging out. I mean, so, I mean, what can you expect? It's, I mean, they do look like they would make a good couple. Don't get me wrong. I mean, just, you know, this, just right now, I think they just got a dope friendship. Yeah, that's my boy. I love Ryan death. Was this whole thing just blow, blown out of proportion, in your opinion, just, like, taken to the next level? Absolutely, absolutely. How do you go from us being friends for years and taking a picture together. So, oh, we had this illicit love affair going on. It, it was a mess. It's a, <laughs> it's a messy situation. Now, Ryan was here, Kitty, and he did say you two were just friends. So why do you think everyone is so up in arms about it? Even C's has dated other people in the shop. Absolutely, C's. I've never asked C's about anything that he's done with other women because that's not my business. We weren't together, we aren't together. I just think it's because Ryan's a good-looking man, I'm considered to be an attractive lady, and two attractive people are just naturally supposed to be together in mm -hmm. everyone's eyes. So, I think that's why. Would you date him? Would I what? Would you date Ryan? Would you date Ryan? Would I date him? <laughs> <laughs> um, I would never rule it out, but <laughs> right now, we're, we're friends. Ryan is my friend. Uh-huh. Don even looked a little curious right there. He wasn't sure how, and he's in the room with you. Yeah, I didn't want to see what she was going to say, y'all. Yeah. I mean, not say never on anything, but... <laughs> Well, Kitty, not, not only do you have an issue with Tati, it seemed to even see his ex, Crystal, has a post-op problem with you. What's going on with there? You are in the middle of everything. I know. I'm like, I just stepped into the twilight zone. <laughs> Everybody hates Kitty, I guess, but... I have no clue what Crystal's problem was with me. Like, I never had a problem with her, and then all of a sudden, you know, she just hated my guts. And like, if you want to get back with your baby daddy, that is on you. That has nothing to do with me. More power to you. He said he didn't want you, but that's for you guys to work out. Nothing to do with me. John, do you think Crystal is just jealous? Uh, I think there is a form of, uh insecurity in it, you know what I mean? Um, you watch uh, Caesar growing, um, doing what he does as a businessman. You watch what's happening on the show with the females and the type of lifestyle he's living. So I think that uh, some part of her still wants to be like home base for him, kind of like, you know, the original, still hold on to him a little bit. But I think she see that he's kind of growing and I think that it's just a form of insecurity kind of coming out now, you know, as she's trying to rebuild her confidence. Yeah, that's a fair point. Now, Don, you aren't out of the hot seat because you and Ashley also got into it on a recent episode. Let's take a look at that. <laughs> After all the shit that you done got well, hold yourself on. into. Hold on. I can understand why Ash is paranoid. What are you doing? What the fuck is that bitch you dancing on? That bitch titties all in your That's how you do me on my wedding day, Don. So guess what? I just learned never say wingman to Ashley. Never say wingman to Ashley. Do you think she was overreacting by coming to the club with her girls? Seemed a little... Uh, yeah, it was a lot. It definitely was a lot uh, for her to pull up like that. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I just want her to get to the point where she understands, like, man, we, we gotta mature and become um, completely trusting of each other. I think once you tell a person that you forgive them, you should forgive and try to grow. I think, you know, personally, uh, she's still in a place where, you know, she wants me all to herself, but I don't think she's fully forgiven me. Right. So that's why I kind of think she reacts the way she reacts. Kitty, would you would you react like that? Like, would you do the same thing that she did? Or do you think that was a little nuts? I understand, you know, Ashley's position. I really do. I'm not going to say that I would go to that extreme, but I can be a little petty sometimes. So I might. <laughs> I don't know. I can't say I would or wouldn't. I like your I honesty. 
I, I would need to be in the situation, you know, just go party. I mean, but I thought it was cute. Like, Ashley showed up with all her girls over there partying on the other side. Like, look, I can be a wing woman if you can be a wing man. I, I like <laughs> Fair enough. She gave it to you, Don. Don, how are you and Ashley doing now? Um, you know, right now, we're still in a growing place. You know what I mean? I think uh, at this level of a platform, you know, it gets harder every day. Um, and, you know, I think when you're married to someone, um, you're constantly dating them. So you're constantly trying to relearn this person, constantly trying to grow with this person. So we're in this place where, you know, it's a lot, but I think, you know, we just need to grow. We're start, starting to just recognize a lot of different things about each other. So we're in a growing phase. Are you still playing wingman to your friends? No, I don't think my friends need much wingman right now, man. We in the gym, <laughs> they looking good. I think they got it on their own. I just wanted to give them the nudge, you know, the little kick out there. You know how you take a little paper plane and you just kind of let it go free? That's all. <laughs> that's one of my boys. Just, just get, get a little there. engine started, you know what I mean? Just a little kick to the edge, and that's all. Let them go do their thing. I like your style, Don. Now, Kitty, did you end... What'd you say? <laughs> they don't need help. They all... <laughs> they're fine. They're fine. They're good-looking guys. They're good looking guys. Now, Kitty, did you end up cooking breakfast? And if so, what did you make? <laughs> uh, no, we really went to the next club. Uh huh. Uh huh. All right, Miss Kitty. All right. Well, before I let you both go, I have to ask which crew do you think has the most hot headed staff, Chicago or New York? Ooh, as a person who has been around both crews, have to go with New York. I have to go with New York because New York will fight about anything. What? You ate the last piece of chicken? You dropped this piece of chicken on the floor? Oh no, all hell's gonna break loose. Like, New York fights some of the dumbest thing ever. Don, would you agree with that? Yeah, I would agree. I, I would say, you know, it takes a lot to get us mad, but once you get us mad, then that's a whole nother territory of a situation you're gonna walk into. So if you done made us mad, then you, you know you really messed up today. Yeah, absolutely. New Yorkers are very tough, especially about their chicken. <laughs> especially about their chicken. Especially oh about their chicken. Oh, my goodness. New York is like, ooh. We don't mess around. Don, Miss Kitty, thank you so much for calling in today. I can't wait to see the new episode. Good luck with everything, guys. Thank Blessings. you. Appreciate you. Thank you. And if you can't wait to see the new episode of Black Ink Crew Chicago, make sure you catch it tonight at 8 p.m. 7 Central on VH1. We got to go to break, but we'll be talking to some talented champs when we come back. Stay tuned. Joining me via Skype is an incredible talent, and he's only 13 years old. He makes us all look bad. Luke Islam of AGT. Hey, how are you, buddy? Great. How are you? Thank you, you for having me. Thank you for being here. You make me look so horrible because you're so accomplished. So if you could be on <laughs> any show on Broadway right now, which one would you be on and what would your role be? Um, I would probably be in Dear Evan Hansen and I would love to play Evan because uh, I actually sang from that show in the live shows and I really love the show and it tells a beautiful story. So I would pick that one. It brought tears to my eyes. That's such a good answer. How does it feel to be competing against 40 amazing champions from around the world? Are you intimidated? Yes, uh, all of the acts are amazing. And it's so wonderful that I get to compete again with such talented people. And they're all super kind and happy to be on the show. So it's, it's great to feel so inspired. Well, listen, I mean, you're 13, but you have really good composure, and we're all really rooting for you. Does it feel different preparing for the champions as it did for your first season of AGT? Was there any difference there for you? It felt very different because um, I knew that the stakes were going to be higher because it is the champions, and um, I'm so excited to be back. Everyone is going to step up their game, and I hope I can, too. You definitely can. Now, I know the competition is stiff, but who do you think is your biggest competition right now? My biggest competition that's going to be on the episode with me, um, I think, is probably Ryan Miller because everyone loves him. He's a very talented comedian, and I also think that 
he's a great person. So he's probably the one who intimidates me the most, but he's also very kind. Speaking of intimidating, who is the most intimidating judge? It's got to be Simon, right? Yes, Simon is definitely the most intimidating judge. I mean, uh, he was the toughest one to get to enjoy the performance because he really is very honest and he's a great guy and I'm so thankful for the opportunities he has provided me. When you're singing the song and you're, you know, you're going through your routine, do you have anyone in mind that you're thinking about or what's going through your head? Are you just trying to get through the lyrics? What's going on? It's very tough um, because I know that the pressure is on me a lot. So usually going through my head is focusing on the lyrics and making sure that the story that is meant to be told is shared. And um, also thinking about all the people who are watching and just trying to see how they're reacting so that I can connect with them. So that's probably what I'm worrying about or thinking about the most. Well, you connect very well. Uh, what did you make of Angelina Jordan's performance on Monday night, awarding her the first golden buzzer? She was amazing. It's so cool to see the first golden buzzer on Champions because I know exactly what that feels like. And I'm so happy for her that she got that opportunity and she truly is such a great singer. Well, so are you. You know, your rendition of She Used to Be Thank Mine you. from The Waitress moved your favorite judge, Julianne Huff, to hit that gold buzzer that sent you straight to the semifinals. How did it feel? Were you expecting that? I was not expecting it at all. She is such an amazing person. I love her so much for so long. And uh, just to see her hit the golden buzzer was shocking. I never in a million years would have imagined that something so special would be gifted to me. I love watching your reaction in slow-mo. It's awesome. So now that Julianne is not on the judges panel this season, who's your favorite judge now? My favorite judge is probably Heidi because Heidi is very sweet and I've been watching her on previous seasons of AGT um, and I'm so happy that she's back. What songs can we expect from you on AGT The Champions? On EGT The Champions, I am very excited to change it up a little bit. The song that I will be singing, I can't give it away, but it is, um, it's not a Broadway song this time. It's actually from a movie, so I'm very excited to sing it. Oh, I'm excited to hear it. Luke, you are amazing. Thank you so much for joining me today. Best of luck on the season of AGT The Champions, although it doesn't seem like you need any luck. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, we'll be talking to one of Luke's competitors on AGT, Oz Perlman. Don't go anywhere. I know that this is going to happen once in my lifetime, and if I don't do everything in my power, focus all my mental energies, I'm going to squander it. I want more, I want more of us. This is why I left my career. This is why I pursued my passion. Welcome back. I hope your mental energies are focused because with me now is a very talented, awe-inspiring, and second runner-up of AGT Season 10, Oz Perlman. Hey, how are you? Yeah, I'm great to meet you. I feel like I'm going to be mind Get ready. today, so I'm a little, I'm a little scared. <laughs> uh, what is a mentalist, and how does it differ from a ma magician, or does it? it? It does. So most mentalists started as magicians. Okay. It's kind of like becoming a doctor. You had to take pre-med, right? Right. So, Magic is fooling the eyes. That's what I would say. It's like if, if I do a card trick right now, you know I'm doing it somehow, but my hands are moving in such a way that you don't see them. Right. So a mentalist doesn't really need props. So I started with card tricks when I was a kid, and at a certain point, instead of me having you pick one, I would just look at you and be like, just think of one. And now, based on all different skills, psychological influencing, I would know what card you would think of before you even did. Or even a different thing is influence you. I can make you pick the one I wanted just by thinking it. So you start to not need props. I, I kind of like the pure form of entertainment and it's got more of an emotional hook. With is, it, is it hard to be in a relationship with you? Because you we always know what wife. the other, Get yeah, I mean, we she gotta, we gotta yes. find out how she's doing, because wow. I married the woman that I cannot read her mind. So I am still the mortal man where I'm like, why am I in trouble, honey? You didn't take out the trash? <laughs> I didn't know. Perfect couple, perfect I know, couple. I know. Well, you're back to compete against some of the best of the best on AGT, the champions. Uh, do you think you're gonna finish first this season? 
My fingers are crossed. Our fingers yeah, are crossed. I know what's going to happen. I'm a mentalist, but I can't say <laughs> yet. I can't say yeah, yet. Yeah, don't spoil it for Simon's me. Simon's going to be yeah. very mad at me. <laughs> but what I can guarantee you is the caliber of talent is incredible. Uh, the show already kicked off recently. It's just, they bring the best of the best from all over the world. I love it. Uh, being in front of those judges again, competing with all these amazing people, the experience of it is really tremendous. Yeah, it's incredible to see just all different types of talent from, from all, all over the, the world, world, which is which is fascinating. And what did you make of magician Dania Diaz's performance on Monday Night's oh, Premiere? I loved it. She had a story trick with the cards where you learned about her, and it was it was elegant. It was great. It was very, you know, she gave a, a lot of herself in it. It wasn't simply right. It was great. I loved it. She's a good storyteller. Great storyteller. And that's what it is. She and entertained unique. me throughout. You yes. bring kind of, especially when you just do things and you just have America's Got Talent. When they bring in the champions, you really get a global, you know, like a global feel for it. There's acts from all over the world. Now, the judges are characters in themselves. Who is your favorite judge? I'm not going to lie. Me and Heidi Klum. I Heidi, mean, you got to go with Klum. There's, there's chemistry there. There's so many selfies. My wife at one point is like, why are you with Heidi Klum so much? I go, I don't know why. Maybe because she's Heidi Klum. Yeah, so, right. Yeah. Is Simon as tough as he seems? Simon is tough, but Simon gives very good critiques. Um, Simon prefers singers, so it takes a real winning right. act when it comes to variety to win over Simon because his, you know, his mindset is very much geared towards music and singing. That's his, that's his bread and butter, his forte. But uh, I, I, I'm not going to say, but I think I might have won Simon over as well. I was going to say, he's the one you really have to sway over to your side. He is. He's a skeptic. All right. Now, you're a mentalist, yep. and you're very good. You're a champion. Give me a little taste of your skills. Well, here's the fun part. I never know what's going to happen. People always ask me, well, would you always know? You always get it right? No. Right. I, I swear to you, I don't. Imagine this right now. I'm sitting on this couch. You're with me. People, TV, switch gears. What if instead of me, you take me out of here, you throw me away. You, right now, close your eyes okay. and picture somebody sitting here in my stead. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to imagine someone famous. Okay, I call this bucket list, and I'm going to make this a hypothetical. This person could be male or female. Equal opportunity. Alive or dead. The choice is yours because you were dreaming up the scenario. Okay. Can you picture your person right now? Yes. Now, open your eyes. Tell them, because I am the biggest disbeliever in the world. Before I walked in the studio, had you ever met me, spoken to me, known anything about what was going to happen? Never, not once. No. How many people went through your mind when I first said, Darren, think of who you would love to interview? How many people would you say went through your mind? Five. That's what most people say, five or six. Because the grass is always green. We want to change our mind. It's like, right. when I go into a grocery store, I'm hungry. I want to buy everything. But then you zeroed in on one person, and I want to show you the way your mind works. Okay. I said things to see your reactions. I said it could be a man or a woman, alive or dead. I said those and I watched you. I watched every little thing you did right there. And what I'd like you to do is please close your eyes. Okay. okay? I just want to show the camera. I want them to see. I don't want to go one step at a time. Open your eyes. 50-50, not that impressive. Is this a woman or a man? A woman. I knew you would go with a woman. I knew you would. Next up, think again. There we go. Close your eyes. Eyes closed, please. I know this sounds very weird, these two combined. Can we see that tight? We get a tight shot on there. Bam, bam, bam. Open your eyes. Mm -hmm. Is this person alive or dead? Dead. And I'm going to hand this to you. And if you had to describe this woman in just one word, okay? I'm going to give this to you before I go further. Hold on to it. Okay. Not looking at this. If you had to describe her, just one word. Bam. I don't know. It's impulsive. Whatever you would have said. Not the name, but in one word. What word would you have used? Hilarious. Okay, great. Open up the piece of paper, and I want you to see every single thing I wrote. I wrote, woman, dead, funny. Who are you picturing? I was going to go with funny. Doesn't matter. Hilarious works for me. This isn't a magic show. Can I say the name? Please. Lucille Ball. Lucille Ball would have been sitting here. Oh! I'm done. I'm done. You have messed with my mind. Is it, okay, is it, okay, well... Now I want to pick a man. God. You know what? You don't do Bose. this. You have you have your phone behind you. Yeah. Two phones. Two phones. Darren's rolling deep. One I in roll deep. Hand. I Bam. roll deep. Holster. Yes. Grab either one. What's the difference? Uh, work, personal, but they're both sort of work. Work and uh, yeah. All. It's all, all work. work all day. Come yes. on. Doesn't stop. Go to your contacts. Okay. Uh -oh. I'm guessing Lucille Ball is not in there. Unfortunately. A little not. bit before the cell phone era, and start scrolling through the names. Okay. Now, hear me out. Do you know what you're doing right now? You're judging. You're looking. You're like, I don't know him. Oh, my God, I love her. I know. I got to get like, rid oh, of my great contacts. Thai food. Love this place. You're, you're looking at numbers. You're looking at people. I want you to pick someone. But look at me. I want you to not know what you're going to do. Okay. Because anyone watching, and I'm always a skeptic, we know we didn't set this up. You literally could have just thought of anybody. Five, six other people, anyone. Boom, you did Lucille Ball. I want you to not even know who you're going to pick. So you're going to scroll. Can I hold this up? I won't look. Yeah. 
Can we get a tight shot there? Is this scrolling? Is this moving? Is there any camera? Bam, bam, bam. Go there ahead. we go. Yeah, scrolling, yeah. scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. You do it. Scroll as much as you want. Whatever okay. you want, stop. Just kind of like, stop. Don't look though. Just start okay. scrolling right now. Go. Okay. Whenever you want, say, I'm done. Oh, wait. Oh, hold on. on. The screen. Oh, okay. But wait, oh. I just don't want the camera to see who it's on. They're not so going to see it. Do okay. This. Just show them. Can we see it? Indeed. Is it moving? It's moving. So you do it. Okay. And, and oh, whoops, it got stuck. It got stuck. Make sure it's moving. So you do it. Start scrolling through. Okay. And hold a little lower and start scrolling. Go, go, and say, I'm done as soon as you feel like it. I'm done. I want you to look at the name at the top. Like wherever you landed here, lock your phone so it needs your face. Bring it close to you. Okay. And see who landed right at the top. Like who's that person where just by pure luck, bam, that's their name. Do you know who that person is? I do. Do you know them? Yes. Mm, I got a weird vibe. Put your phone down for a sec, face down. I feel like you haven't spoken to them in a while. Not like bad things, just like, I don't know. They, did they move? I don't know. Okay, hold on. Also a female. Am I two for two here? Correct. Now your name, D-A-R-Y-N, is five letters. That is correct. My name, weird one, O's, O-Z. Two letters. Think of her name. Okay. And how many letters are in it to yourself? First name and last name? Or just, just the first, just think of it in your head. Mm -hmm. And you just finished counting, so you went like this, which means you were done, which means you went ba-ba, ba-ba-ba. Five letters, wasn't it? That's correct. Watching your eyes. Am I right? You haven't spoken to her in a little bit? That's correct. She's nice, but you like her, but I'm just trying to think why the disconnect, and then, and then think of the first letter. It's a vowel. E. That's correct. It's five letters, Ellen. It's not Ellen DeGeneres. Ellen Burke? It is Ellen Burke. It is Ellen Burke. Show them. It is Ellen Burke. Still owes How? you money from lunch I three months ago. Get her that. to Venmo you. I mean, well, like, oh my God. I'm freaked out. No wonder you wanted to wait to the end of this. Oh, dear. yeah, I said. You got to get out of my studio. Uh, I, I'm freaked out, dude. I, I, I can't date you now because you're going to know everything I'm texting and this and that. My job security 200 years ago would have been one show burned at the stake. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. you're. Do you do this to your friends and family? Do you do this they're to your wife? They're over it. They're over it. If they're still my friends and family, as soon as we go up to order food and they're like, I don't know what to order, I'm like, I know what you're ordering. They're like, okay, we know. We know. We got it. <laughs> you know what we're going to order next. So, uh, I gotta keep you around. You're gonna, tricks. you're gonna come into my, party my phone contact. Thank you so much, O's, Absolutely. for chatting with me today. Best of luck this season. I am rooting for you Tune in every in sort Monday. of way. America's Got Talent: The Champions airs Monday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern on NBC. Don't go anywhere after the break. We'll be going back in time in reality. Stay tuned. What an amazing show. Unfortunately, that's it for today. Big thanks to our amazing guests, Matt Frazier and Alexa, Don and Miss Kitty, Luke Islam and Oz Perlman, who just, that was incredible. Reality Check streams Monday through Thursday on Twitter at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. Make sure you're following at people so you don't miss a thing. To end our show today, we're taking a look at the pre-pop star days of JoJo Siwa. I'm Darren Karp, and that was your Reality Check. I just want you to know that you're auditioning for nationals to see who does the solo. You gonna nail it? I better. <laughs> In this 2015 episode of Dance Moms, Jojo Siwa takes the stage for her big audition and almost immediately forgets the choreography. But Jojo fights through it, improvising a whole new routine. The judges, the judges didn't notice it happened. I forgot my solo. I the judges may not have noticed, but JoJo is more worried about the wrath of Abby, her extremely hard to please coach. So we would have liked to show off our choreography. I don't want to like, it was my favorite solo, and I really wanted to do it good, but I just, I don't know what happened. It's looking bad for JoJo, but then a miracle. Come here. JoJo's brain freeze is one of the great moments in reality history, and really, there's nothing better than a hug when you're expecting to take a hit. Abby's not very nice to JoJo or I most of the time, so I'm shocked.